Welcome to the second lecture on the transfer of heat. In this one we will be looking at convection and radiation. This follows along in chapters 13.1 and 13.3 in your textbook. Here we go. Convection is the transfer of thermal energy throughout the movement of a fluid or due to the movement of a fluid. Convection or natural convection occurs because as a fluid increases its thermal energy or heats up, it um, becomes less dense and generally expands, but the density will uh, decrease and therefore it will rise above the more dense or colder fluid. Um, we've seen the flow of fluids throughout uh, the last couple of weeks when we were talking about pressure and Bernoulli's and um, with natural convection, you have these fluids, they're changing density, becoming less um, dense and rising above. So colder things will tend to sink, warmer things will rise up. We don't say heat rises, but warmer fluids rise. So we say, well, when I say warmer things, I mean warmer fluids. Force convection is when you have a fan to, to push some fluid through, and we'll see an example. I'll show an example, a picture of that in a second. And then we also have thermals. You'll, we'll, I'll, yeah, you know what, I'll just wait until we get there. So convection within a liquid, the warmer fluid at the bottom of the pan is going to rise up to the top of the pan uh, just because it's closer to the heat at the bottom. It gains more thermal energy and as it rises up, that's where we get a convection cycle. Whenever you have a kind of like a loop, that's considered a convection cycle. Most heating systems utilize some form of convection. They will Then you'll notice with most heating systems, they're near the ground or the bottom of the floor, that area. Uh, and what they will do is they will heat the floor, the air around the floor, and that will therefore rise, and then you get a convection current as it kind of transfers around. If you look for any like cold air returns for a heating system, maybe in your house or maybe somewhere else, those are always located near the, um, the base of the, uh, near the floor, near the baseboard. And what they do is they bring cold air back to a furnace. And then we'll look at a force convection in next. In force convection, you have uh, some pump or a fan or something else like that that uh, forces the air to flow and therefore creates um, that transfer of heat in, or fluid in any jet. It could be a little liquid fluid also. Um, in this case, this is an example of a car where you have uh, the air is pumped through a radiator, it cools off, that cool air is then uh, forced through the engine, around the engine, and through different parts of the engine, um, and it, it increases in temperature, takes some of that thermal energy away from the temperature, and then goes back into the radiator where it deposits that energy. So that could be also, this, the radiator is also considered like a, a heat sink where it takes off that extra thermal energy and then dissipates it to the surrounding environment. A thermal occurs naturally uh, when the ground is heated and the air above it then begins to rise. You can actually notice this during the summer when, like, you're looking out on the asphalt. The uh, air right above the asphalt on a hot day, it kind of, it's, it's, you can actually kind of see it rising up, and that causes that lower density air causes the light to kind of, uh, it behaves differently. It uh, refracts um, through there, and so. That's why you kind of see that haze right over the pavement on a hot day. Um, or, or sometimes you'll see a reflection where it, it uh, bounces or reflects back to you because of that difference um, in densities. This is also, thermals also cause sea breezes in the afternoon. So the sand on a beach will heat up um, faster than the uh, water and gain temperature due to the sun. And as that, as the sand heats up, it heats the air right now or right around it. The air rises. It draws in cool breeze off the ocean, and that's why on most um, uh, tropical islands, you get kind of like an afternoon sea breeze that starts building in um, two, three, two, three in the afternoon, and then kind of lasts for a little while and cools the cools everything down. Radiation is the transfer of thermal energy by, through electromagnetic waves. And electromagnetic waves um, that for thermal energy are within the infrared 
bandwidth. Um, this is below visible light, so we can't see the these electromagnetic waves, but we see the visible electromagnetic. We see them, we can't see, but we can use our camera or other types of uh, detection devices to determine how much radiation is being put off by different uh, objects. Um, the amount of radiation depends on the surface area, or the amount of heat loss, excuse me, depends on the surface area. The difference in temperature, and in this case, it's um, we use Kelvin uh, for this to measure that uh, the difference in temperature, and the emissivity of an object. This incorporates uh, certain objects uh, emit uh, thermal energy or electromagnetic waves easier than other objects. They also absorb them easier too. Um, so at the constantly throughout the day, uh, some object is absorbing and emitting uh, electromagnetic waves and, and emitting heat um, through that. But usually it's absorbing and emitting at the same rate, so it kind of maintains that constant temperature. Um, now certain objects, which I'll look at in a second, we'll just wait for that. But uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm pretty good on this. Darker colored or lamp black, co you could say, coated objects um, will absorb and at the same time emit uh, thermal uh, infrared radiation, electromagnetic radiation, at a greater rate than something that is a silvered or shiny. Um, silvered or shiny objects, it, it often re reflects it. It will not absorb or uh, emit it back. So it kind of maintains that constant temperature. So if you, you think of something like the Pavement outside, black top, black top, black asphalt that will absorb and get really hot during the summer. Where I mean, you'll still have uh, something that will be a a wire object or like concrete will have a lower temperature, will reflect more back into uh, the atmosphere. Here are a couple uh, thermal thermal images using uh, thermal cameras that take a the amount of infrared electromagnetic radiation and that the different frequencies that they're at um, which corresponds to the energy and takes that and converts that and in, in to a corresponding scale um, of temperature and we have the first picture there a wolf for mr. wolf and on of that and you can see how the wolf actually is pretty much it's blue blue always usually represents a cooler or a less uh, a lower temperature so the wolf has good insulation um, around its skin and, and less around its legs. And as we look at the house here on the right, um, we see that the roof is mostly blue. It's not, this is probably a house in the evening. Um, not a lot of thermal energy is, is escaping through the house, except for if you look along the top of the roof, that's where the uh, hot air will rise up to. And so in that point there, there will be the most uh, radiation from there. And you can see through the windows also, this is the highest amount of thermal radiation escaping. And then the creepiest picture of all is this little boy holding a ball at the bottom of the screen. Um, you can see right in his, his face, around his eyes, nose, and mouth, that's where the most of the thermal energy that he has is being radiated from. Um, and you can see his different temperatures there. You can kind of see uh, where like the blood's going to be carrying uh, the thermal energy, so you can see the, the, the corresponding. And you can see the ball is pretty much at room temperature, not even of registering really so we can't pick it up too much so these are just some fun images you can always google anything like this all right thank you very much one quick question for this lecture um how does a sea breeze form on the afternoon of some island with a, a beach a nice sandy white beach um think of a tropical island where it's now it's getting a little cold and we'll go there and spend sit down for a little while and take a nap but um you should be able to use all three methods of heat transfer in your answer. So think of conduction, convection, and radiation. Where does the sand get its energy from? How does it give its energy to the air around it? And going on from there. So thank you very much. Just write a, please uh, write a short description on the link. And have a good night. See you tomorrow in class.